for the Lord Jesus Christ through the years, sent out preachers and missionaries all over the world today, ran buses and started churches and all the rest of the work of Blessed Hope Baptist Church. By the way, folks, can I say this honestly? Would not have been done without her. Right. Right. Been accomplished. Right. All four of her children today are faithful to God's house and faithful in her service to God. God has chosen to take one of her boys, call him into the ministry, and by the way, has now used him as a national preacher across this country and around the world. Used his books and writing books to affect literally tens and tens of thousands of people. Think about that. Jim Elliott said that Jim Elliott said this, God always gives his best to those who leave the choice up to him. The reality is that this message that her life preached was made possible because of the greatest message of all. Yep. The reason this dear lady's testimony is what we all experienced it to be and knew it to be is simply because of the difference that Jesus Christ made in her life after she trusted That's Him right. as her personal Savior. She would be the first one to tell you that. It completely changed who she was. It allowed God to use her to touch many, many people. Grandma Ross co uh, chose to trust Jesus Christ as personal Savior. When she slipped into eternity on Tuesday afternoon, she immediately entered into heaven in the arms of Jesus Christ. The wonderful good news of the gospel that Grandma Ross trusted in for salvation that God used to change her life is available to every single person today. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you quickly how you can know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again... He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born of water, uh, be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter to the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. Later on down in the chapter, Jesus breaks it all the way down to bare basics and says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible teaches us that man is a sinner before God. Romans 3.23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. All of us have sinned on our record, on our account. Our sin separates us from a holy and righteous God. Our sin causes us to miss the mark and fall short of of God's glory. The Bible further teaches us that our sin has a serious penalty that accompanies it. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is death. It's not just talking about physical death, although that was a part of the uh, God's uh, curse back in Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned. Physical death was part of that. But that's not what that's talking about there. It's actually talking about eternal death. And death and hell are the wages for the sin that we commit before God. God. Every lost soul is this minute living under the condemnation, according to John chapter 3, of their sin. The reality that if they die without trusting Christ for salvation, they'll spend eternity in the devil's hell. Right. The good thing is that God loves us. Amen. Yeah. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Jesus Christ came to earth and satisfied the payment for our sin debt. If we simply believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross was buried, and rose again the third day, then we can be saved and enjoy heaven for all of eternity. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 14, 6, I read it earlier, John, Jesus saith in him, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There's nothing you can do apart from trusting Jesus Christ for salvation. You can't be a good person and get there. You can't get baptized and get there. You can't join a church and get there. You can only trust Jesus Christ and get there. Amen. The only thing you have to do, folks, is simply this. Confess your sin to God. Trust Jesus Christ. Call upon Him for salvation. Romans 10, 9, the Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call, upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. According to the Bible, death is not the end, but it's the beginning of eternity. Heaven is available to anyone who will trust Jesus Christ for salvation. Grandma Ross loved each and every one of you, her family and her friends. She lived a life full 
of serving her Savior by serving others. Her life preached a wonderful message that encouraged and challenged and uplifted and strengthened those around her. I ask you a question this morning in closing. What message is your life preaching today? Yeah. Has your life been changed by God and by the Word of God? Has your life begun to uh, be transformed by the Lord? If you've never received Jesus' free gift of salvation, I'll give you that opportunity here in just a moment. And when we go through that prayer, folks, if you've never trusted Christ, I would encourage you to make that decision today. If you are saved, think about the life message that you are living, that you're telling. Let's make sure that it's one that pleases the Lord. Make sure that it's one that uh, brings glory to the Lord and magnifies the Lord. At this time, I want everyone to bow your heads, please, and close your eyes. We're finished. We're going to have a moment of invitation. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you've never been born again, I would encourage you folks with every, every ounce of uh, encouragement and, and, and prodding and pushing that I can, don't leave here today lost. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. If you're under the sound of the message of the gospel this morning, it's your time. It's your time to get saved. You need to trust Him. You can trust Jesus right now to simply call upon the Lord for salvation. If you understand that you're a sinner, you understand that there's an eternal death penalty because of your sin, and you believe that Jesus was lived a perfect life, was you know died, buried, and rose again the third day. If you believe those things, then all you must simply do is just call upon the Lord, confess your sin, and trust Christ. You can say, Dear God, I confess that I'm a sinner before you. I know that my sin must be paid for. I believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again the third day. I'm trusting Jesus Christ and Him alone. God, please forgive me of my sin. Save me and give me a home in heaven. I accept His free gift of salvation right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, heads by eyes closed. Is there anyone right now that felt that you were lost, chose to trust Christ? I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise you I will not embarrass you. I believe it would be a good testimony, though, for the family of Grandma Ross to know maybe if there was someone that was lost at her funeral and they chose to trust Christ, that would be an encouragement to them. If you made the decision to trust Jesus this morning, would you just simply lift your hand up and raise your hand? I promise I will not embarrass you. What we're going to do is I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have one final song. And I encourage you folks, the memories that you have, don't let them fade. Think about them often, relive them. Lord, we come to you, and Lord, we sure thank you for the life of this dear lady, Grandma Ross. I thank the Lord for the last 14 years that I've known her, Lord. She's always been very welcoming, very gracious, very kind, ever encouraging, ever trying to strengthen and just pray. And many, many times she'd come up and say, we're praying for you and the work you guys are doing in Bloomfield. And Lord, what an encouragement that was. Lord, I thank you for her life. I thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness to you. Lord, I thank you that in her life, Lord, she made that decision to trust you. And then, Lord, together, her and Grandpa Ross made that decision to just simply follow the Word of God, the leading of the Spirit of God, the preaching and teaching from the men of God that they heard. And, Lord, you, you just took them and used them, Lord, beyond their imagination, above and beyond. And Lord, we sure thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for choosing to save us. Thank you, Lord, for offering that salvation, Lord, to us. And Lord, thank you that we can just simply trust you with our lives, live to please you. And Lord, then you just take us and use us in a great way. We sure thank you for it. Bless the rest of the service tonight or today and the, uh, the graveside to follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my God.